Now, on HistoryRadio.org, literary historian, Michael Henry Quinn, examines the career of the French movie legend, Jean-Paul Belmondo. Jean-Paul Belmondo, new wave icon and action star. Warner Brothers presents an epic story of the misery that enslaves the human spirit and the love that sets it free. Jean-Paul Belmondo in a triumphant telling of Victor Hugo's classic tale Les Miserables. In 2021, one of the greatest stars in French cinema passed away, Jean-Paul Belmondo. In 2008, Radio Prague covered the publication of a new Czech book about him. Their brief report described Belmondo's unique standing in the old Soviet bloc country, the only major Western star to gain a foothold behind the Iron Curtain during the Cold War. Through him, a generation of Eastern Europeans got to experience the capitalist action flicks. Among hipsters around the world today, Belmondo is sometimes elevated to a rugged icon of snobbish intellectualism through the early films of the Nouvelle Vague movement. But in Eastern Europe, he is remembered as B-movie royalty, the macho man with a twinkle in his eye. Of course, it was Jean-Luc Godard's 1960 movie a bout de souffle that became his breakthrough, but in many ways his collaboration with Philippe de Broca was just as important for his future career. De Broca had been a film photographer during the war in Algeria and became so disillusioned by the events he witnessed that he decided to make more cheerful and uplifting movies. He started out as an assistant for a few Nouvelle Vague directors, but changed past and made comedy farces when he established himself his two producers, Alexandre Minoshkin and George Danciège, suggested Belmondo for the role of the brash, swashbuckling Robin Hood character Cartouche. A few years earlier, in 1952, they had produced the adventure classic Fanfan la Tulipe, with the legend Gerard Philippe in the lead, and now they broke a bet on Belmondo to revive the swashbuckling genre. Cartouche was an instant box office hit in 1962, and two years later the success was followed by L'Homme de Rio, The Man from Rio, an action-packed contemporary adventure about a soldier played by Belmondo who pursues the man who kidnapped his girlfriend from Paris to the Amazon jungles. The Oscar-nominated movie features a series of spectacular action scenes and the broker declared in an interview that the movie was made because he needed a hit. His producers had only been reluctantly swayed, and he spent five months finishing the script. The result was satisfactory even to himself, but the film was by no means a favorite for the Bruca among his own productions. He said, this was the kind of movie I longed to see when I was 14. As a director, the Bruca often took a hands-off approach to his actors, and Belmondo tended to follow his instincts. Belmondo will always be Belmondo, you cannot change him, you cannot hide his personality. When he plays a drunkard, he is a drunk Belmondo. When he is in love, he is Belmondo in love, the broker told Gardner in 1969. Belmondo's charismatic self shone through, especially in B-movies like Tendre Voyou from 1966, Flick Voyou from 1979, Le Savoir from 1969, and Las Stellas from 1982. The two latter were action comedies by Gérard Houry, France's preeminent comedy director, most famous for his collaborations with the hilarious genius Louis de Funès. In the 1960s and 70s, Belmondo became affiliated with the commercial side of French cinema. Godard and Truffaut ruled the film festivals and the student bodegas, but ordinary Frenchmen rushed to the cinemas to experience the shenanigans of Louis de Funès and the hazardous stunts of Jean-Paul Belmondo, his broken nose and seductive smiles. To critics like Pierre Maillot, however, Belmondo represented the disillusionment of French identity because so many of the models for genre movies were American. Two of the great golden ages that have supported the self-esteem of French cinematic culture have been the poetic realism of the 1930s and 40s and the Nouvelle Vague movement 
of the 50s and 60s. As a major star and a leading man of the Nouvelle Vague, Belmondo therefore became the natural successor to Jean Gabin, the icon of the 1930s. But where Gabin had acted tempered and cool, often under dire circumstances, Belmondo would burst with joie de vivre. There was a generational gap between parents in the 1950s and a new rebellious youth. The young wanted more than traditional French values that needed happy endings. The vulgar neon lights of Hollywood and Las Vegas beckoned in the distance. Belmondo grew out of the new Belle Vague into a new commercial reality. The Armenian-born Henri Verneuil was a director unconvinced by new wave ideology. The Belmondo we witnessed in Verneuil's movies was rougher, the soldier in the Second World War, the tough criminal and uncompromising comp. The inspiration for Peur sur la Ville from 1975 was probably Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry. Belmondo plays a policeman pursuing the serial killer Minos through the streets of Paris in stylish cinematography. The Belmondo we see in this movie is not his usual careless self. The lives of young women were at stake. A contemporary Norwegian reviewer called it a tough, ruthless movie. The newspaper stated that it was impressive to see Belmondo dangling in a rope from a building, jumping between rooftops several floors above the asphalt and making subway journeys on top of the cars. Because Belmondo has no stuntman. Belmondo also kept a serious face in the gangster movies Borsalino from 1970 and Le Voleur from 1967. The latter was directed by Jacques Cousteau's old cameraman Louis Mal, today one of the major names in the history of French cinema. In Le Voleur from 1967, Belmondo shines as an actor. He penetrates the mind of a professional thief. He persuasively portrays nerves of steals and deliberate theft. According to the uh, contemporary press, Belmondo used all his tricks, his whole range of charm. Like Belmondo, Mai would transcend the Nouvelle Vague conventions and create a memorable genre movie aimed at the masses, based on a novel quite contrary to ideas about the auteur. Belmondo was therefore not only an actor who drifted from art into commercialism, he was the personification of a suppressed part of French cultural history. There existed another France alongside Godot, Truffaut and the other Carrier directors, a cinematic culture unashamedly modelled on Hollywood. Belmondo, that first ingratiating smile of the Nouvelle Vague movement, became the major box office draw of this other France. He was just as charming as Roger Moore and at his best, adventurous to the level of Harrison Ford. Lord. Ransom, isn't it? A-OK, -okay, Sir James. C-I-C -C at C-I-A. Oh, but don't start all that again. I haven't worked out your last lot yet. The French have arrived. Ah, splendid. Thank you. Oh, look out! You have just heard literary historian Michael Henry Quinn on the career of the French movie legend Jean-Paul Belmondo. This is HistoryRadio.org, a free radio stream promoting knowledge of literature and history.